The most difficulties was actually for the refugees when we first arrived was language uh, from all, for most of us and the trust. Lucky was excited about promoting girls' education. Uh, she comes from a pretty conservative community and not everyone supported the idea of girls needing and deserving an education. I started kind of like doing a little little and ground level advocacy, like trying to bring the challenges and the real stories of the women and girls in the room, in the tables, and explaining why education is important for women. When you, you speak to Lucky, you definitely get the sense that she has a feeling of sort of responsibility to her community. I think by telling her story is a way to show that there's an example. Look, I'm a, a Rohingya girl who, uh, who, who came out of you know, fleeing genocide, living in the camps, to being uh, speaking before Congress. I mean, for the very first time, I used to feel a little nervous, you know? And I still feel very, very emotion because it's not easy to go back to your past, bring in all those challenges, bring in your past experience and bring in them in the table. So it was really, really tough for me and I used to get emotion every time I share my story, other stories in the community, but now I'm used to and I never cry anymore. I know that you're carrying all of the Rohingya girls who can't be here with you and they know that you're carrying them. When I say born lucky, of course I wasn't lucky when I was born, but I, I made myself lucky, so, which is why the book is born lucky. Rohingya is capable enough the, if they are given a chance. You know, if, if they are being allowed to go to school, they can do anything. We have people that can be doctors, that can be teachers, you know, engineers, but give them a chance and then see who they can be.